Hello everyone, I'm Graham Moman, the Lag Distillery Manager. And although you can't join us in person for the celebrations this year, the team at Lag have put together this video for you. So please enjoy the tour and I look forward to seeing you at Lag where we can raise a glass together. Welcome to Lag Distillery. We are part of Isle of Arran Distillers. As you can see, I am outside of our visitor centre and our still house. So the site itself is situated about 18 miles southwest of Brodick, which is where our main ferry terminal is, and we're approximately a 50 minute drive from our sister distillery of La Cranza in the north end of the island. So the distillery site itself sits in these incredible views. We look out to Ailsa Craig and then round to the sound of Cobranin, Kintyre and all of the islands in between. We started construction of the distillery back in 2017 and we were able to run the stills for the first time on the 19th of March 2019. We are hopefully going to have our own whisky by this time next year, so not too long to wait. So the design of the building is really meant to blend in with the lovely rolling hills of the south end. We even have a turf roof, which really helps us to imitate the environment around us. Not only do we house the visitor centre, the still house, but we also are home to three bonded warehouses and we're currently under construction for three more. And also we have over 2,000 apple trees around the site. So hopefully one day we'll be able to make our own cider. So here we're at the rear of the building, a brand new building and a new distillery in the south of Arran. But here on the south of Arran, the history of whisky production goes back generations. And we're really, really excited to not only be part of it, but also bring people down to visit this part of the island, which has usually got a little bit of a quieter atmosphere than the north. The whisky we're making here is going to be a traditional Aran whisky, more on the peated side. Our barley actually comes from the east coast of Scotland. It's malted for us in Montrose by Brut Malts to our own very specific specifications. The peat we use as well, good old Highland peat, lots and lots of earthy floral notes, lots of heather, um, really, really suits the peated characteristic of our whisky. But one thing we really, really hope to do in the future is start drawing peat from different areas, not just different parts of Scotland, but even further afield as well. We're also getting really experimental on the sites here at Lag Distillery. Just to the right of me here, these empty fields, currently filled with sheep, will eventually be filled with our own barley. And we're very, very excited to one day hopefully produce a 100% Aran whiskey. Here we are now in the still house, roughly about double the size of La Cranza. Currently don't have all of our washbacks and stills in but we do have a lot of space for possible expansion in the future, such as four new washbacks right where I am standing really, and two new stills just behind the ones in the background. And over here we have our grist bin, which holds all the barley that has gone through the mill and been turned into pus, malt and flour. We have different percentages for these. We have 22.5% pus, 63.1% malt and 14.4% flour. Now, the reason we get these percentages is we want as much malt as possible because that's where all the sugar is kept. And that helps us to get all the sugar into the washbacks and get the best product we possibly can. So this is our Lag Cast Society wall. This is where all the names of the different cast owners are who are part of the Lag family. They all have a cask down in the warehouses, which were distilled in 2019, the very first casks that we filled here, that they now get to own and they can follow along in our journey until their whiskey is ready in the next 10 years or 20 years, depending how long they want to keep the cask in the warehouse. Okay, so welcome to the production floor of Lag Distillery. I'm gonna walk you through the mashing process now. I'll talk you through what you can see just uh, around me and then I'll talk you through the process itself. So just up above there, we have the grist bin. Coming down, we've got our semi louter to marsh tun. Um, moving across, we've then got the underback, and finally across on this side, we have our three hot liquor tanks and our control panel. Okay, so we take four tons of grist. That's fed into the mash tun with a first water. Now the first water goes in, at approximately 64 and a half and we balance that out with some cold water just to get the right temperature. The mash will then sit for about an hour before we prepare it for transfer across to the washbacks. So once the first water's gone in, we let that sit as I've said 
We'll then put a further water in, that's the second water. This water goes in around about 78 degrees. It rinses more sugar from the grist and we also send that across to the washbacks as well. Once that's done, there's no more real usable sugars to go forward in the process, but we do put a third water in and currently we put this in at about 95 degrees, so quite hot. Um, that rinses the remaining sugars from the grist. Um, we don't waste that water because it's still got sugars in, but not quite a lot. Um, so what we do, we send that across into our hot liquor tank number one, and then we reuse that water the following day for the following mash. So normally we do about five mashes a week, Monday to Friday, um, and any grains that remain after the mashing process, uh, we send them outside uh, via an air system and they're collected and used for uh, cattle feed. So these are our washbacks. A washback is basically a giant bucket that we ferment the water in. Here at LAG, we have four, and they're made of Douglas fir, sometimes known as Oregon pine from Vancouver Island. Each washback can hold 25,000 litres of liquid. We could actually fit a double-decker bus in here if we wanted to, or four elephants. So the first thing we do in this step of the production is we take the watt from the mash tun, cool it, and fill it in the wash back. We only fill to 20,000 litres as we need to leave a little bit of space for the yeast to do its business during the fermentation. So what is fermentation? Basically, we're taking the sugary wort and we're adding the yeast to it to produce alcohol. Yeast is a fungus. So what it does is it takes the sugar and it turns it into alcohol and carbon dioxide. So here we've got a wash pack that's been filled about a day ago. You can already see the yeast doing its work. You've got the agitation and the bubbles going. Um, We've got the blades spinning to prevent any bubbles from the whole thing boiling over. You can't smell it, but I can. It's a fantastic smell. You're really getting that sort of yeasty, beery smell and the CO2. We ferment for a minimum of 72 hours. And when that's finished, we are left with what's essentially a very strong beer. That's called the wash. It's about 8% ABV at this point. Um, here at LAG, as you can see, we produce a very cloudy style wash, which has a lot of rich, earthy, heavy flavours, which will help accentuate the heavily peated style of whisky that we're making. At LAG, we have two stills. The wash still at 10,000 litres, and we've got the spirit still at 7,500 litres. We are both stills running for approximately seven hours each day. LAG stills are designed to give a distinctive heavy flavour profile. The most important factor about the spirit characteristics is the shape of the still. So if you've got a good still shape, the likes of the bulbous one we have here and the lantern one that we have here, these are ones that were both chosen for this specific reason. The shape discourages reflux from happening. The heavy vapours escape down the line arm. Now, if you look at them, it's a big, nut, big neck and it goes straight down onto the line arm. We've got all the good vapours that way. Our spirit still, on the other hand, it's uh, a lantern glass shape. It allows us to do more selective distillation. When running a spirit still, you have three distinct parts. The four shots, the heart and the fence. And these are components which we use in the safe. The four shots run for about 30 minutes and they're collecting the less favourable compounds, the ones that we don't really want to begin with in the, in the spirit. After 30 minutes, we move the, the, the what we call the, the safe arm, we move it across onto the spirit receiver, where we start collecting it, and it's there for about 90 minutes, and this is where we collect the heart of the spirit, the good stuff. After 90 minutes, we then put it back across into the, the low wines receiver. In the low wines receiver is where we collect the, the faints from the spirit. The action of reflux is where the alcohol will turn to vapour and recondense further up inside the neck of the still. It happens when the vapour meets the colder copper and collects to the sides of the neck and runs back into the still again. This process of vaporising, condensing and redistilling allows the alcohol to have more contact with the copper and allows the copper to bind with more of the congeners used in flavouring the whisky. 
Speed is also a factor, as well as the shape of the stills. At La Cranza, they run the still at approximately 6 litres to 7 litres per minute, so that they can get a more estuary spirit. Here in the south of the island, we run the stills at approximately 10 to 11 litres a minute, pushing the spirit more towards the dark side. Coincidentally, if Lag were to run these stills 24-7, it would produce around 750,000 litres of pure spirit per year. Hello, now we're in a warehouse number one down at Lag Distillery. This is where we fill all our casks on a weekly basis with our spirit, and it's also where we store plenty of the casks, especially the 700 private casks for the Lag Cask Society members. Uh, they're all maturing very nicely up on the racks just here. In terms of our own casks and what we're filling, we do about 63 to 65 a week, depending on, uh, on numbers and, and what, what spirit's being produced. Uh, we certainly fill a variety of casks, uh, mostly bourbons, but we have kind of been filling a few, a few varieties, sherry, uh, hogsheads, butt casks, uh, plenty of wine casks, Amarone and Sauternes, and uh, a few quarter casks as well. Uh, apart from warehouse number one, uh, we've got two others, warehouse number two and number three. They're mainly just kind of palletizing warehouses, so they're pretty chock-a-block full just now, to say the least. And uh, soon we'll have a few more warehouses built just down the road as well, because we're certainly need the space. Uh, production's going in full flow just now.